Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering a leader that I really wish that they hadn't bug fixed, Nader Shah of Persia. And before moving on, I just want to thank everyone for the continued support that I get on these videos. If you find value in my content, please consider giving me a like or commenting what you think about the leader down below. I do my best to respond to every comment I get. Nader Shah, unfortunately, doesn't do very much to change the Persia identity from what Cyrus was doing. His ability, Sword of Persia, gives all units plus 5 combat strength against units with full health. Cities not founded by Nader Shah gain plus 2 faith and plus 3 gold on domestic trade routes. This used to be bugged where you would get the combat strength versus cities and all units all of the time and your trade route bonus applied to all cities' domestic trade routes. And this made Nader Shah a viable sieve that wasn't absolutely busted, but was really strong. Since the hot fists to remove that bug, Nader Shah really just became mid. Is this better than Cyrus's movement speed buff on Surprise Wars? In my opinion, often or not, no. Nader Shah is pretty good at growing your empire once you take a few cities, you get some extra gold and faith to continue your war machine, but this doesn't help you get those early cities you need, and that's the barrier for, for entry for this sieve. It's kind of a post warmongering warmonger bonus, and you really don't need those in this game, you want a continue to warmonger warmonger bonus. Persia's sieve ability is Satrapies. You get plus one trade route upon researching political philosophy. Domestic trade routes get plus two gold and plus one culture, and your roads move you one era faster than other roads. And I find that in the early game, this really doesn't separate you from Cyrus in any way. You probably won't have conquered a city this early, however, it is a good little boost to your trade route, and you aren't really looking to get money out of this. You're using it for some money on the side while you're sending production and food to the capital with domestic trade routes to build units to take out a neighbor. Once you do take a city, your trade route's going to have plus 5 gold, plus 2 faith, and plus 1 culture. And this isn't a small thing for domestic trade routes because you're going to be getting lots of food and production and things if you have your city set up for it. Domestic trade routes are strong, and if you but if you want a trade route sieve, Molly sending to city states is just going to be flat out better at generating faith and gold and being a warmonger at the same time. If you can get a decent amount of cities, you can get a great Grandmaster's Chapel run going, but it all depends on that first city that you take. And this leads us to our next unique, the Immortal. Oh how the mighty have fallen flat on their faces here. The Immortal is a swordsman that gets an archer shot and is 10 iron cheaper to make. This used to rule the early game as a unique unit, and now it just gets eaten by men at arms. Nader Shah really needs this to work for him, or his timing is just off. If you get to bronze working and iron working early, if you get access to iron early, and if you have enough gold to buy your first immortal or two, Nader Shah feels pretty good. Combine this with a hero or a vampire and you're pretty much viable. Essentially, you need to get a conquered city as early as possible to make the best use of your abilities. You need to get faith going to get a Grandmaster's Chapel army. You need to conquer more cities, develop more commercial hubs to get more trade routes, faith buy more units, conquer again, etc, etc. This is his loop. He does not scale well into the late game because your trade route bonus is flat. You only scale by getting more and more trade routes, which means the earlier you can get that extra city, the better off you are. Unfortunately for him, the Immortal doesn't really pull its weight anymore, and if Gaul and Babylon are in your game, you can't even take out a city-state. Finally, Persia has the Paradeza. A unique improvement that can give you plus 2 gold and plus 1 culture. You get even more gold for adjacent city centers and commercial hubs and culture for adjacent holy sites and theater squares. They can't be built beside one another though. And this is almost as useless for Nader Shah as it is for Cyrus, unless you're going for some weird culture game. The nerfs to the Paradeza were just too much for it to make it really good anymore. You don't want to be buying units with gold as Nader Shah because it's so much more expensive than Faith buying them. I mean, you can get a decent amount of gold, but I find it is better to gold buy traders and Faith buy units. 
especially since you're not really going to be using your faith for monumentality golden ages. You just have so many things you want to use gold for that are not units. You want to use faith to buy units and gold to build cities. The problem is, the Paradesa just doesn't give you faith. It doesn't provide your military arm with enough to make it useful, and Nader Shadow is all about the military. He is meant to be played aggressively. You have to rush immortals, you have to get a nearby city early, and you have to be able to keep that city or group of cities that you take. You take a break, sim city it up a little bit, get more army with your golden faith, rush down another neighbor, sim it up until you fill your trade route cap again, and you repeat. And while this can be effective, it is not the simplest way to play a warmonger, and there are other domination leaders that just do things better. I'm not saying that he's terrible at domination, it's just a very mid. You need a good map, you need game modes probably to make him very fun. Domination is 7 out of 10 for Nader Shah. Religion is his next best victory condition. Your bonus should work on apostles and missionaries, and if you take out a neighbor early, you can use their cities to feed yourself faith. But you're not going to be building your holy sites and your armies at the same time. It is not guaranteed that you can get both a prophet and a neighbor city as long as your immortals are up. It's usually one or the other, and if you're going for religion, you're going to get a prophet, do like a medieval war, and then renaissance industrial faith win, which is pretty late for a faith win. Like all other warmongers, Nader Shah can also do science and culture victories pretty well, because the more land you have, the better any victory condition is. You just have no real bonus or reason to go to these routes, it's outside the flavor of the sieve, and if I counted science and pr culture for every warmonger, it'd be 10 out of 10, but because it's outside of their, their flavor, and because you don't get any real push towards it, you just get 5 out of 10 for both here. Diplomacy is by far the worst choice. You need to war, you'll have no friends, city states are gonna hate you, and you have no production to win the contest. 4 out of 10. Overall, Nader Shah and just Persia in general are very, very mid. They're not super fun. He does what he does. It's semi well. If you can get a good spawn, it'll be okay, but at no point when you play him do you feel busted. I wish they'd never bug fixed him. He was better then. I give him a C along with Cyrus, and let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.